We are following breaking news. Just over half an hour ago, the House of Representatives narrowly approved a $4 trillion budget. A huge win. The vote was 216 to 212, with 20 Republicans voting no. There were no Democratic yes votes, not a surprise. The vote clears a key hurdle toward the president's goal of cutting taxes. Joining us live now is Congressman Jim Renacci of Ohio. He's a member of both the House Budget Committee and the Ways and Means Committee, which is now drafting the tax cut bill which is expected to be unveiled next week. So we're very happy to have him here. Because so maybe he's going to tell us something about what's in it. He's also announced he's going to leave Congress to run for governor of Ohio next year to succeed uh, term-limited Republican Governor John Kasich. Uh, uh, Representative Renacci, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. What's up? Congratulations. With congratulations on passing the bill. Uh, talk to me about the 20 Republican colleagues who voted no on the measure. What, what, what are they concerned about? Well, of course, they're concerned about the spending. It's the same thing I've said. But the problem is the budget is only a blueprint. It's a gimmick in many ways. We haven't followed a budget since 19... We have, the Budget Commission has, or, uh, process has been around since 1974. We don't follow budgets. We break them. Both Republicans and Democrats end up breaking them. So in the end, for instance, if we, we passed a budget in 2011 that by now would have been close to balancing if we would have followed it. And that's the concern I have. That's why I went ahead and voted for it, because the true goal here is to get a budget passed that gets us the ability to do reconciliation and do tax reform. Well, this budget... Let's get to tax reform, because 51 votes is certainly an easier hurdle than 60. But in truth, how are you going to get to 51? We haven't even seen the lobbyists uh, attack Washington, which we know they're about to do in the next week. When you want to have tax cuts to the magnitude that you do, it's just simply not going to fly with huge portions in the country. Think about high states like New York and New Jersey, California and Illinois, who are very worried about the current plan to eliminate the deduction for state and local income taxes. Well, I think what we have to do is we have to look at the tax reform plan in totality. You know, when you talk about state and local income tax, today 72% of Americans across the country do not itemize. After we double the standard deduction, it goes up to 95%. Yes, people, I'm a CPA, by the way, as well. I know. And I've, and That's I've why we love having you here to talk about this. Well, and, and I've done multiple tax re returns, and I can tell you some people think they're getting the deduction, but they're not. The standard deduction is much more than the actual expense. So I think what we need to do is make sure we get all those pieces together. We have to explain it. I agree. But in the end, I'm not too sure the state and local income tax. And by the way, this tax plan is to cut taxes for middle Americans, not the wealthy. But that's Most not really that's not what, what the studies does. show, right? We've, we've looked at a whole lot. We don't have enough information, and we'd like to get it, and hopefully we're going to get it next week. But actually, everything we're, we're indicating is that uh, the top 1% get 80% of the benefit out of this tax plan right now. Well, and I just don't agree with that. The problem is, and, and again, it's semantics, because if you take business taxes, if you take pass-throughs, yep. and you take corporations taxes, pass-throughs are going on a personal tax return. That's a business tax. When you reduce that tax, of course, it's going to end up looking like the 1%, but it's just not true. When you just take a look at taxpayers in general, Americans who pay on their personal income tax, take away the business side of it, you're going to see that the goal here is to get middle American taxpayers with less taxes so that so they Congressman, can take that's, more So, Congressman, that's an interesting way to do that. That's a little bit like saying if you just take away the fact that I don't have hair, I'm not really bald. No, no, no because... <laughs> Here's the other thing, though. i got to explain it to you. Business is business, and we need to be able to compete. We have the highest tax rate okay, in the world. Okay, we don't, sir, we don't. Sir. We don't. You've got to stop saying it. You know that full well, right? You know, I'm sure you have corporate clients. Let's you know full up. well that you don't have a single corporate client that pays a 35% statutory business rate, right? And, sir, the fact that you're a CPA, you talk about people don't go through standard itemized deductions. Corporations all do. do. We can look at the statutory rate all day long, but if you find me a Fortune 500 company who, by the way, their stocks are soaring that pay that rate, I will eat my hat. You don't have well, a hat. Well, there's, <laughs> there's a reason why, I love the comment, eating your hat. There, look, there's a reason why corporations are leaving America. Our tax rate is too high. And I tell everybody that. When our, when our statutory rate's 35 and other, state, and other countries are much less, like, uh, you know, you could take Ireland 11%, people are going to go there. So yes, let's, let's just stop that for a second. We got, we're going to put up a board here. Our effective rate after credits and deductions is 18.6%. It's not anywhere close to the top in the world. Now, as an accountant, as a CPA, if you had, if I were a corporate client of yours and you looked at my books and said, you have to pay 35%, you know I just wouldn't use you again, right? No. 
No, because the truth of the effective rate, and I think you said 18%, I can't see 18. the board. 18.6. Yeah, the truth of it is the effective rate somewhere around 25 or 26 percent, and we're still not competitive across the country. Across we have, we have 18.6. We've, we've looked at this many times. I think I've spoken to uh, the uh, Congressional, Congressional Budget, Budget Office. Office. That Art Laffer told me the other day he thought 18.6 was actually high. Uh, I, I, nobody says 25 percent. I'd love well, if you I'm would sorry. send me information that says that. I'll, I'll study it. I promise I will. So we spent a whole bunch of time under Chairman Camp going through this, looking where the a average uh, tax rates were. We ended up at a 25, 26 percent. We can't compete. In the end, look, tax corporations don't pay taxes anyway. I like to argue that point too. They pass it on to consumers, which is a whole other issue. There's not a corporation in this country that pays taxes. It's the consumer that pays and taxes. There's no it's lever on. here that's going to change that. Corporations aren't going to change their behavior and stop passing it on to consumers because you give them a lower tax rate. They're going to pocket the money themselves. You'll see it in dividends. You'll see it in share buybacks. There's no lever that's well, going to save the consumer. That's where you and I would differ. I was in the business world for 30 years. I also had businesses. I had to always worry about my quarterly tax payments. I couldn't add employees. Many times I couldn't wage, raise wages. Many times I couldn't take a payroll because the tax burden was so excessive. But so that's not I've, the case in the current climate. Look at the stock market. Corporate America is booming. Today is a huge earnings day, and we are seeing earnings off the charts in large part because of low interest so rates, and that's not changing. No, We've got a chart up right now, just so I know you can't see it, but it's it's a, it's the chart of the S and P 500 from March 9th, 2009 to now. Now, right? As you you're familiar with this, it looks like one could, took a ruler and just drew a straight line from the bottom left to the top right. So we've got high profitability, we've got high stock price, and we've got virtually free money. That those are generally the things that would be impediments to a business expanding, right? Well, here's the issue. The president, and I, and I support him in this, we're cutting regulations. Businesses know we're cutting regulations. Now they look to tax cuts. That's why they're growing. If I was back in the business world, I'd be excited too. I'd be adding employees. I'd be happy that my regulatory burden was being cut. I'd start to see a business climate where you can grow. That's not the case four years ago, five years ago. So why the, the stock market go up for, why the stock market go up for seven years? Well, the stock market dropped. If you really look at the effective, I didn't see the chart. No, put it right. Let's put it back up. Let's put the stock market back up. It has been going up steadily, since, been going up steadily since 2009, March so 9th, to be precise. If you take if you take 60 days before President Obama was elected, the stock market tanked. But why would you do and that? Then, why would you take 60 days? Nobody invests for 60 days. Can I just no, do me a favor? No, no, no. Hold on a second. I'm going to ask uh, our cameraman to just focus on this wall over here. I'm going to walk up to this to just tell you what's going on. I know my director is going to be mad because the lighting's not very good here. But what I'm showing people, uh, uh, Congressman, I'm putting my hand at March 9th, 2009, and I'm going to just take a straight edge here, basically, and just do it like a little airplane that's been taking off a runway. And and I'm going to just keep on going with this little airplane. And guess what? We're over here. Congressman, it's just disingenuous to suggest that the stock market has not been gaining for the last several years when we didn't have corporate tax cuts and we didn't have any of these things. At least give what? me that, sir. You're a CPA. Let's at what? least have an honest conversation about what makes corporate profitability go up, what makes so stock prices go up. If you let me talk, I would tell you that if you take that chart and you go back one more year or a year and a half. One more year from stock. where? Go back to 2008, 2007. In the recession? You really want well, me to I'm, take I'm, this I'm, back to the recession and you want to blame that on tax cuts, sir? No, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, you're talking about a stock market that's booming and I'm telling you talking about a stock market that today is growing because of the regulatory climate and because now they realize but, but where, is this, is where is this growth? Wait, where is all this sir, growth that came sir, from? We need to point something out. One of the main reasons you saw the recession, you saw the crash happen was because of lack of regulation. Because there wasn't enough regulation, we saw the subprime crisis happen happen because you saw predatory lending practices those practices we then saw regulation put on since 2008 banks put more money on their balance sheet and they were safer and we've seen a steady climb in the stock market now the party started again with deregulation forgetting that regulation exists to protect people if you want to deregulate across the board giddy up guess what's going to happen we could face wow. another reckless environment I was I was in the business world back then. so was I, I. tell you and I could tell you that the regulatory climate, although there were regulations, the regulators were not following the rules that they should. And that's why they were lending 
you know, to people who didn't meet qualified loans. They were lending to people buying houses and buying homes they should have never done. These are the issues that occurred back then. So, look, Sir, we can I, argue. I, I we was can, in we that exact differ. business, and if people were actually breaking the law, they would have gone to jail. They weren't. The regulations weren't put in place. The regulations were put in place after 2008. Well, again, we can differ all we want. I'm a big believer in the free market system. I'm a so big am believer I. in So are we. And, well, and, and, I, and I do believe that we have to have smart regulations. So do we. But we can't have over regulations. We agree. I'm also, and I'm also a believer that we've got to reduce taxes on corporate America and the middle class so that they can have more money to grow the economy and corporations have more money to employ more people. Okay, so we're agreed on all of this stuff. What we're waiting for is the final part of what you just said. We don't want over regulation, we're in favor of good regulation, and we're looking for the tax cuts for the middle class. That's what we haven't seen yet. Let's let's make a deal that you come back on our show and we continue this discussion when we got a little more meat on the bones with this tax plan. We'll do it. I'll even come to the studio and visit with you. I, we, we appreciate that, sir. Thank you for your time. Thanks for engaging in the conversation. Thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.